I hope you enjoyed last week's episode where my husband joined me for a discussion on marriage. If you missed it, please go back and listen to episode 46. Two weeks ago in episode 45, my friends joined me for a part one discussion on healthy friendships. Today's episode is part two of that discussion. So I'm gonna, you know, jump right in and continue sharing along with more of my friends that are joining me today uh, to talk about what healthy friendships look like. So we'll start first with mutual respect. You know, a long time ago, I found a good deal on Craigslist for a Wii gaming system and considered getting it for my kids. I was messaging the seller back and forth and I asked her why she was selling a brand new system and she shared this story with me. She had bought the Wii for her kids for Christmas, but she felt they were being disrespectful to her as a parent. You know, not listening, not doing their chores, and generally taking her for granted. She decided to sell the Wii to teach them a lesson. She was feeling a little bit guilty for selling it, and she asked me what I thought about it. So I told her as a fellow mom, I understood how she felt, but that her kids needed to love and respect her and that selling the Wii would teach them to respect her. Now, I didn't say that to get the Wii. I want to put that out there. I really believe in any relationship, there needs to be both love and respect. You know, plenty of people disrespect people they love and love people they disrespect. You have to have both, in my opinion, for a relationship to be healthy. You also have to have a way of handling conflicts or disagreements that will inevitably happen in respectful ways. If they aren't handled properly, they could escalate to the point where they end the friendship. And along with mutual respect, I think all parties in a friendship should have a healthy regard for one another. Nobody should be the goat or the greatest of all time while everyone else is considered mediocre or, you know, you have a superstar scenario where everybody else is a fan. Healthy friendships don't have big fish in a little pond mentality. Only equals should exist in the relationship. Okay, moving on to the next topic, which I am calling diversity in friendships. I'm going to let my good friends, Valerie and Kim, talk to you about how and why you should diversify your friendships. They really are the perfect people for this topic because both of them make friends everywhere they go, literally everywhere they go. I've known Kim since high school and I've watched her do that and I've known Valerie for a decade and I've watched her do the same. So let's hear from Kim and Valerie in that order. How do you maintain a healthy distance and not become too dependent on a friend? By recognizing that different people, i.e. different friends, will serve different purposes in your life. For example, one friend might be someone you go shopping with. Another might be someone that you eat dinner with or go bowling with. Another may be someone you're closer to and speak about your inner thoughts and how you feel about things. By having a diverse group of friends, you won't become too dependent on just one in case that one person becomes heavily involved in something else and no longer has as much free time to spend. And then you won't feel abandoned if they're not available. If you don't have a group of friends, you run the risk of pressuring one person to spend time with you when they simply cannot. I thought long and hard about the friendships that I've built through the years. I think that you build a diverse network of friends by living and through the choices you make in your life. Some of my friends represent the different stages of my life, family friends I've had all my life. I have friends from nursery school through college, have friends who have been part of the organizations that I've participated in. I also have friends from my various career endeavors. I have friends acquired after getting married and having kids. We moved around three states and each time met even more friends. I'm very blessed to have deep, deep friendships that are more like family than most. Thank you, Kim and Valerie. I I agree with both of them that you should have more than one friend if possible because, you know, different friends, as Kim said, meet different needs in your life. And as Valerie explained, your needs may change depending on what stage of life you are in. You know, for instance, when I became a mom, I needed to add to my tribe some what I call 
quote unquote mommy friends who understood that stage of my life, especially the challenging, you know, infant and toddler years. However, I still needed my childless friends or those with older kids because I didn't always want to talk about my kids. It wasn't a subtraction equation, but rather addition. Also, as you know, Kim mentioned, you don't want to put all your friendship needs on the shoulders of one person because they might not always be available and you could completely overwhelm that person. I also think in addition to having more than one friend, you should have a variety of friends from different walks of life because life is more interesting when you know and have relationships with people who aren't like you, who don't have your personality, weren't raised in your neighborhood, do not share your cultural interests and so on because you you can learn something about the world, become more well-rounded as a person, have empathy, and see life from another viewpoint. Diversity is not just, you know, a term for the workplace. It should show up in your relationships as well. Okay, moving on. I think healthy friendships also need clear and executable boundaries. You know, your boundaries and what is important in your friendships will vary depending on who you are, who your friends are, and what is important to you. The point is you should set boundaries because there's potential for much damage and breakdown if you don't. You know, there's an expression that good fences make good neighbors. Well, I say good fences make good friends also. But I would caution you to not find out about a boundary after you've crossed the line. You know, set those boundaries ahead of time. Be proactive so you can avoid those danger zones and those deal breaker situations. Now I want to talk about the thing nobody likes to talk about. When friendships end. No matter how great or how long or how close your friendships are, sometimes they end. You know, my favorite poem is by Robert Frost where he says, nothing gold can stay. There's a quote that says, all good things must come to an end. And a wise woman once advised me to hold on loosely to the people in my life. I didn't fully understand what she meant at the time, but life has taught me that relationships, including friendships, end for many reasons. Some reasons you control and some take you completely by surprise and are out of your control. But just like failure is part of success, loss is part of relationships and friendships. Sometimes people leave and sometimes relationships dissolve. And when and if that happens, you have to be willing to let them go. Don't force something that has expired. Expired products are often spoiled and can harm you if you use or eat them past the expiration date. My college buddy, Vanessa, is going to offer you a great perspective on the ending of a friendship. So let's hear what she has to say. I would like to start off with a quote. You have to let people go. Everyone who's in your life are meant to be in your journey, but not all of them are meant to stay till the end. I had a friend who I knew since junior high school. We had a disagreement which ended our 10 plus year friendship. I was hurt and blindsided by how our friendship abruptly ended. But over time, I slowly realized that she wasn't meant to stay in my life. Simply put, she was part of my journey. Thank you, Vanessa. I agree with Vanessa that some people come into your life for a season, not necessarily for a lifetime. I love what she said about the friend that she lost was part of the journey, is, I believe is what she said. It's, it's a great way, I think, to look at loss and transition. I've learned that people belong to God, not us, and we don't get to choose how, when, where, and with whom they live their life on earth. That is why I believe I was advised by that very wise woman to hold on to the people I love. Just do so loosely. Be willing to let them go if necessary. Now, I am not here to break up friendships, but like I said before, it's time for some real talk about what friendship is and what it should be. Maybe if we have more of these discussions, we can save someone from being a victim of fake friends or from suffering the consequences of opening up to people who don't value you or value your life. We need fewer tragic headlines about what so-called friends did to harm or cause someone's death. I want to leave you with a scripture that says, he who has friends must be friendly. The bottom line is, if you want a true and healthy friendship, you have to be a true and healthy friend. 
I want to thank my friends for weighing in on today's topic. And I want to thank you, the listeners, for considering what we have to say. Let me know if you found the episode helpful or if something in particular spoke to you. Please also feel free to share with me what works in your friendships, what makes your friendships thrive and work. You can leave a comment wherever you are listening or the Try Again with Monique Facebook page, or you can leave a voice recording at speakpipe.com slash try again, speakpipe.com slash try again. I hope to hear from you. Bye for now.